Hi, my name is Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today we're going to create a Twitch overlay using Photoshop. Uh, this particular overlay is designed for playing Minecraft, but once you've created one overlay, you can go back into the Photoshop file and switch it around to make different overlays for any particular game that you want to play on your Twitch channel. So let's, without any further ado, open up Photoshop and get started. The first thing we want to do within Photoshop is make a new file and make sure the file is the size of your monitor. So in my case, that's 1920 by 1080 and I create it. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is give ourselves a background to work with. So I took a screenshot of Minecraft and I'm going to go to File, Place and select that screenshot and then stretch it to the full size of the screen so that we have a background to work with. So now we're going to make our top banner. Now there are multiple ways that we could do this, but we're going to keep it simple today by simply creating a new layer, selecting our rectangle tool from the side here, and I'm going to drag out a rectangle which is roughly on the top part of this. Now don't worry if it overlaps ever so slightly, because if you have snapping on, it will snap to the correct top part anyway. So now if I select the move tool, you'll see that these edges fit perfectly to the edges of the screen. Now, um, we want to have an outline on this, so we could make another square behind it, but instead of doing that, we're going to go into Blending Options by right-clicking on the layer. We're going to select the Stroke tool, and uh, we want the color to be a sort of nice darkish red, so I think that looks good. And let's just give it just a little bit of more thickness. That seems good to me. And then, finally, it's a little bit sticking out too much for me right now, so I'm going to click on it and hold Control and just slide it up just a little further until we get right up to the top like that. Now, <clears throat> one final thing that you'll want to do just to give it a little bit of transparency is click on the fill button just here and bring it down to somewhere between 70 and 80%. Uh, this just allows you to see a little bit of the game through it. It makes it a little bit more dynamic. Um, and just like that, our top bar is finished. So now we can get on with the bars. So to make our next set of bars, we're going to make a new layer. But before I do that, I'm just going to click on the layer that we already have and name it top bar so we don't get confused later. And then I'm going to simply right click on it and duplicate that layer. And uh, I'll give this the name bottom right. And now that we have another version of it, we can simply drag it down, put it to roughly where we want it to be at the bottom and then scale it down to the size that we think would work. So once again, I want only a little bit of this to be showing. I want it to come up to about the top of the hunger bar, maybe a little bit less so that it's all in line and maybe leave just a little bit of a larger gap just here. And now we have a bottom bar as well. And we're going to do exactly the same thing to create a bar on the left side as well. So go ahead and do that now. Next, we want to make the frame for our camera. Now, this part is optional because if you already have a green screen or something like that, then obviously you don't need a frame around you. Um, but uh, I don't have anything quite so fancy. Uh, I just have my camera set up to be a square. So I'm going to make a square frame for it. So I'm going to start by selecting the rectangle tool again. This time I'm going to hold shift down. Um, and oh yeah, I need to create a new layer. This time I'm going to hold shift down, which just preserves the ratio to make this thing a perfect rectangle. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than it needs to be for now. Um, and once again, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to the blending options and I'm going to choose a stroke again. But this time I want this stroke to be on the inside. And um, for the color, I'm going to select the same red color border that we have set up already. I'm going to make it just a little bit chunkier, maybe something like 10, maybe a little more, maybe 13. That should be fine. But um, when we have our overlay in our broadcasting program, I use OBS, for example, um, we want our camera layer to behind it, be behind it so it will fit into this frame. And so we need to get rid of the green on this layer. And the way that you do that is quite simple. Uh, you just right click uh, on the layer. So you click on the layer and then click on the fill menu just here and just bring that all the way down to zero, which leaves us with just a nice frame here, which we can maneuver to the right spot and we can make it a little bit smaller again by holding shift and pulling it down. And I think that will do just fine for me. So uh, now that we have the basic setup, um, it would be nice to add a few logos and links to different things. Um, we want to be able to see who the latest subscriber is. We want to be able to see the latest donator. So let's start setting up the text element of this. So to begin with our text, I'm just going to create a new layer and select the text tool and just drag it out quite large in the middle to begin with. 
Now, on the right here, you'll see there's a little character menu. If you open this up, this will allow you to choose the, the color and the font and everything that you want. Um, I would like this to just be quite simple. I just want it to be white. So I'm just going to do this by hand by changing the RGB to 255. Uh, Lieber Franklin, I know, is the font that I want already. So I'm going to start off by just uh, putting the latest subscriber. Latest subscriber here. And um, it's generally a good idea, as soon as you've made something like this, to move it to roughly where it's going to be so you can get a rough idea of how it's going to look like. Um, when you're moving it around, if it's snapping too much and you can't get it in the right place, just hold control down and it'll give you a little bit more control, funnily enough. Uh, I'm going to drop that there. And I'm going to just add a colon on the end of here because I've forgotten it. Um, and to make this stand out a little and to make it look good, we're once again going to right click and go to blending options. Um, I'm going to select stroke. Uh, and I think I'll just leave that as the standard stroke. I'm also going to select a drop shadow, which just makes it pop out just a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, and now that we have that style already in place, what we can do is we can just use the exact same one, uh, copy and paste it and change the text for each corner, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to call this one latest donation. And I'm also going to copy the text onto the clipboard and move this one over to the other side to where it's going to be the donations. And once again, select the text tool and select all of this. And that's how we do it for the uh, text at the bottom just here. And uh, it's exactly the same for the text just up at the top, although it might be quite nice to have logos for the social media sites that you will have. So um, let's go through how to do that now. So for social media logos, um, you'll need to search for a pack of free-to-use social media icons. Uh, there are plenty of them out there, just make sure that you do have the permission to use them. Um, the particular pack that I found had Photoshop versions of all of the logos, so um, I'm just going to load up the Facebook logo here. Now, um, we want this to be up in our top corner here, so I'm just going to grab it and pull it up. Um, we know we want it to be somewhere around here. But I'd quite like it to fit in a little bit with the line that we have already in the color scheme. So what I'm going to do is once again, uh, I'm going to go to blending options. And I'm going to go to the stroke. And uh, under the stroke menu for the color, I'm going to select the same color as the line that we already have going across there. And I'm just going to pull it out ever so slightly so it looks like it's around the same thickness that we have here in place. And then just to make it look that little bit better, I'm going to just pull it off the side just enough so that we can see the Facebook logo and that it looks like it's fitting in to our line that we already have in place. So I think that should be just about good enough. Have it slightly overlapping like that. Uh, maybe out just a little further. But not so. As, there we go, that suits me. And so now that we have this on this side, we're going to take the exact same approach to put a Twitter logo on the other side. So in your pack, find your Twitter logo and do exactly the same thing that you did for the Facebook logo, but on the opposite side. So things are starting to come along. Um, we have our social media addresses in there for Facebook and Twitter. We have our latest subscriber and donation bars. It's all out of the way of the Minecraft UI, and we have a nice frame for our camera. The final thing I would like to add is a logo. So um, I know I want this logo to be in the very center of the screen, so I'm going to grab one of these rulers from the side and pull it. Um, and you'll notice as it gets to the middle, it'll sort of snap into a place which is the center of the screen. So now we have uh, a center line. Uh, if you can't see these rulers, by the way, if you just go under View, you can select Rulers or just press Control r Now, we're going to pull in a logo to use. I think we're going to use this Make Use Of logo. And that will be placed exactly into the center of the screen. Uh, now, we know we want it to fit in, but it's already got a red border. So I thought it might be nice for us to have a, a green border around the logo and then a red border around that so it all fits into the same style. So I'm going to select and say that's okay. I'm going to create another layer, which I'm going to drag down behind our logo that we already have and create another green square. So I'm going to pull it down from the top and just try and get it as exact as possible. Again, if you don't get this exactly right, don't worry because you can snap it into place later. Um, but as it happens, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, once again, I'm going to right click on the layer, go to blending options, go to stroke. And as we've done so many times before, I'm going to select the red of this stroke. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so it fits, uh, feels just like it'll fit in with that top bar. That should just about do it. 
And once again, uh, as we did last time, um, I'm going to make this slightly transparent so you can see through it. Um, but we have two separate layers here. So the way I'm going to get around that is by selecting one layer, control clicking and selecting another, and then saying convert to smart object. And now we can take this one smart object and bring the opacity down just a little bit, not as much as the rest, maybe down to something like 89, 90%. And then, of course, we're going to take the whole thing and make it much smaller. So that seems about right. I'm going to pull it up and it'll snap to our center point again where the ruler is. I'm also going to pull it up a little bit into the top here and have a little bit of a gap maybe just like that. And that looks good to me. Um, to see it without the ruler again, you just uh, hold control and press semicolon. That will hide the rulers. And uh, now I think that we're looking pretty good. Now, to save this file so you're ready to use it with OBS or whatever software that you use, um, you need to uh, make it so it's completely transparent. So we can get rid of this uh, holding image that we've had um, by just deselecting the layer. And also, we don't want that white background layer either. And this is a good final time to have a quick look through and see if there's anything you notice that you like or don't like. So, for example, I've noticed that this logo up here, as much as I'd like it to be transparent, it doesn't look particularly good with the stuff behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this full opacity again, um, and so that'll be nice and bright. And it should be out of the way enough of any gameplay so it won't be a problem. Um, and then save your file as a Photoshop file. So um, I already have, so it'll ask me if I want to replace it. And now you have the Photoshop file, you can switch it around, change it for any particular game that you want to play. But for this particular setup that we want to use with Minecraft, we'll now save it as a PNG file, which will give it a uh, completely transparent background. And once again, I have already saved it once, so it'll ask me if I want to replace it. And I just go for whatever compression settings are there already. And uh, now you can load this up into OBS or whatever program you use, and it should look quite good. So let's take a look at what we've just made. And here we are inside our Minecraft world using our freshly created Twitch overlay. Um, so as you can see, it is possible to make a good looking Twitch overlay without having to know every single Photoshop trick in the book, without having to do a million and one things. Um, just something simple that you can pr put your information on and put a nice border around your camera can be more than enough. And of course, there are many uh, Twitch streamers that don't even bother with that much. But um, I hope this tutorial has been useful for you if you're just getting started out with streaming. Uh, there is, of course, a lot more integration that you could put into this. That's why I've left a gap for your latest donation and subscribers. And of course, this same Photoshop file could be used for any game that you particularly want to play. You just need to move all the bars around so it doesn't get in, in the way of the UI of the game that you are playing. I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. Uh, my name's Ian Buckley. Don't forget to check out the main Make Use of website where there'll be a written up version of this. So if there's anything that was a little too fast to follow on video, you can read it there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more weekly tech tips and giveaways. Thanks.